Hi, welcome back. This is Rakesh Naik. Today we are going to discuss about an application of linked list. We will represent polynomials with the help of linked list and try to add two polynomials. But before we start, a small information I'd like to say. In this channel, we produce every video in two different languages. Hindi as well as in English. If you want to watch this video in Hindi, kindly follow the link given in the description. And if you have not yet subscribed, kindly subscribe and press the bell icon so that you will get all the updates from this channel. So let us start polynomial addition with linked list. Let us say if a polynomial is given in this form 5x square plus 3x to the power 1 minus 10 then we can write as 5x square plus 3x to the power 1 minus 10x to the power 0. If I want to represent 5x square in the form of a linked list I can represent it in this way. I will create a node 5 as its coefficient 2 as its exponent and null. And the next part is null because only one term is there. Otherwise, we need to write the next term's address. Let us say I want to represent 5x square plus 3x to the power 1. So, I can write in the same fashion. But in the first node, I have to write the address of the second node. In the second node, you can see 3 is the coefficient and 1 is the exponent of the term 3x to the power 1. Similarly, the last term is minus 10x to the power 0. For that, I can write 10 as the coefficient, 0 as its exponent and null. And there is no more term in this particular polynomial. So, in the form of a linked list, I can represent this particular polynomial in this form. So basically a polynomial of single variable if I want to denote it in the form of ax and I can write it as a0 plus a1x plus a2x square plus anxn where a n term should not be equal to 0 and then only I can say the degree of the polynomial is n. For this also I can represent it in this way. The highest term is a n x to the power n. So that's why I'll create a node where in the coefficient part I'll write a n and in the exponent part I'll write n. When I'll create the next node I'll write a n minus 1 and the power is n minus 1 and null. So in this fashion I'll keep on creating my nodes and keep on adding it till a naught with excess exponent to be 0 and the next term is null. Here I am not keen of telling you how to create a polynomial. Rather, I will emphasize more on how to add two polynomial using this linked list representation. In my previous video, already you know about how to create single linked list. In my previous video, when I told I had only one data and only one link part. But here, there will be two data part and one link part. The first data part will contain the coefficient. The second data part will contain the exponent. And there is a link or there is an address for the next node. So like that, I will be writing the polynomial using linked list. Let us directly go to polynomial addition. Let us say x1 is a polynomial where I am having 7x to the power 4, 5x square and 3x to the power 1. I can represent it using a single linked list this way. That 7 is the coefficient and 4 is the exponent of the first term. 5 is the coefficient and 2 is the exponent of the second term. And 3 is the coefficient and 1 is the exponent for the third term. Similarly, if x2 is another polynomial, which is 5x cubed plus 3x to the power 1 minus 8x to the power 0, I can represent it in this way. Now let us try to add these two polynomials. Here I am taking two pointers i which is pointing to the current location in polynomial x1 and j is the 
pointer pointing to the current location of x2. I am having 4 and 3 as the exponent of the, of the highest term of these two polynomials. And I found that 4 is greater than 3. Then you can see here this formula I have to take. That is case 1. If the exponent pointed by j of x2 is less than the node pointed by i of x1. Then what I do? I copy the current node of i to the resultant node. It will be copied to the new node and the new node will be later on added to the resultant linked list. So I will create a new linked list. Let it be x3 where I will keep my result and k is one more pointer and I am having two part data part right now vacant. As 4 is greater than 3, I copy the term pointed by i of x1 to x3. Hope you understood it. This is the first case. And to represent it, I am having this particular algorithm. If i's exponent is greater than j's exponent, I am having a new node. And i's coefficient, I will copy to new node's coefficient. And i's exponent, I will copy to new node's exponent. And then I will move the pointer i to the next node. Like this. Now, the current node for x1 is pointing to the term 5x square. And the current node j pointing to x2 is pointing to the term 5x cube. Now you can see. Now the exponent part of the term pointed by j is greater than the term pointed by pointer i. It means 3 is greater than 2. So the second case will come. Then what I will do? The term j I will copy to the new node. So something like this. And I will make this new node as next of the node pointed by i. Like this. And again I will move k. Let us see the algorithm. If i's exponent is less than j's exponent, then what I will do? j's coefficient I will copy to new node's coefficient and j's exponent I will copy to new node's exponent. I will increment j and I will take k to the new node. So I am making the link also. Now j is pointing to its next node and k is pointing to its next node. Now you see the node pointed by i and the node pointed by j. The exponent of both the term now 2 is greater than 1 and it is same as case 1 and I am writing the value of the ith term in the new node and, and I am writing the address of this new node in case null something like this and I will improve j I will improve k. Similarly here you can see i is pointing to the term 3 x to the power 1 and j is pointing to the power term 3x to the power 1. Then what I do? I will take both the exponents. I found that it is equal. I will take both the coefficient and add them, write it. This is the third case. When the exponents are same, then I will take both the terms coefficient, add them and write the value in the new term. So in the new term I am having 6x to the power 1. Now i, j and k are incremented to its next term. And you can see here i is now pointing to null. j is pointing to the last term. So what I do? Whenever such condition is there, it means it may happen that either j has come to the end or i has come to the end. In such kind of situation, the other node I will copy totally to the resultant one. Here I am having only one term 8x to the power 0 in pointed by j which is left out in x2. So I will copy that term and write it as next to the node pointed by k. Something like this. Now you can see 
J is also moved to this next and J is pointing to the last node. I is pointing to null, J is pointing to null. It means in polynomial X1 and X2, there is no more terms available. So our addition is completed. So you can go through this particular program. Here you can check the same three cases are described over here. If I's link is not null and J's link is not null, I am going to do this set of code. If any one is null, it means here why J link is not null. It means I's link is already null. Then I do this set of work and a reverse part is also there. So this is how I am going to add a polynomial using linked list. Hope you understood the logic and the code in C++. In our next video, we are going to do some more application of linked list. So keep watching, keep learning. Thank you for watching this video till the end. So meet you in our next video. Till then take care. Bye.